Quite right, too. Hello, good evening, and welcome. You've just entered the arena. I'm Michael Corrin, and a really packed show for you this evening. Now, as you know, I had the misfortune recently to interview an odd little fellow called Rabbi Shmuley Botox, uh, 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 Botir. Now, he's best known for being Michael Jackson's spiritual advisor. How did that go for you? Uh, writing a book called Kosher Sex and for being rather aggressive in promoting himself. The discussion has since gained enormous publicity, uh, mainly due to the man's apparent obsession with me. Now, most of this is it's just irrelevant, but one thing does deserve to be further discussed. He stated that Pope Pius XII was, and I, and I quote here, one of the most wicked men of the 20th century. Whew. That Botox can't be taken seriously is not the point. This view, or a less extreme form of it, I suppose, is sadly common. It's wrong, it's damaging, horribly unjust. If anybody's looking for a book, I recommend one by a credible rabbi, David G. Dallin, entitled The Myth of Hitler's Pope. And that rabbi will be on the show in a few weeks' time. A few facts here. Cardinal Bocelli, the future Pius XII, drafted the papal encyclical condemning Nazi racism and had it read from every pulpit. The Vatican used its assets to ransom Jews from the Nazis, ran an elaborate escape route, and hid Jewish families. The World Jewish Congress donated a great deal of, of, of money to the Vatican in gratitude, and in 1945, Rabbi Herzog of Jerusalem thanked Pope Pius, and I quote again, for his life-saving efforts on behalf of the Jews during the occupation of Italy. In Israel, the feeling was, was just as strong. When Pius XII died in 1958, Golda Meir, then foreign minister, delivered a moving, heartfelt eulogy, praising and thanking the pontiff for his work for the Jewish people. Indeed, until the 1960s, few doubted that the Pope and the Catholic Church had been on the, on the right side, the side of light during the war. It was only after German author Rolf Hochhuth wrote his play The Deputy that attitudes began to change. Now, he alleged that the Vatican collaborated with the Nazis. And what is seldom mentioned is that this man was also a defender of Holocaust denier David Irving. This, however, was the 1960s with its fetish for anti-establishment rhetoric and within Catholicism a certain, well, post-Vatican II ambivalence and reluctance to defend the church against fashionable accusations. It's, it's certainly the case that the Pope did not issue the outright attack on the Nazis that some in the church wanted, but this has to be considered in the light of hundreds of millions of Catholics living directly under Nazi rule. Also, and this is deeply significant, when the Dutch bishops made a public statement condemning na Nazi anti-Semitism, the Germans responded by arresting and murdering every Dutch Jewish convert to Catholicism they could find. Hundreds of thousands of Catholic religious and lay people risked their lives and sometimes gave them to help the Jewish victims of Nazism. And to a very large extent, their sacrifices have gone uncelebrated. But not by all. Dr. Joseph Nathan, speaking for the Hebrew Commission, said at the end of the war, quote, above all, we acknowledge the Supreme Pontiff and the religious men and women who, executing the directives of the Holy Father, recognize the persecution of their brothers and uh, hasten to help them, disregarding the terrible dangers to which they were exposed. And there is another who has also been targeted for attack and for libel. His name is Israel Zoli, and he was chief rabbi of Rome. In 1945, he became a Roman Catholic, and part of his conversion was based on his admiration the Pope's sheltering and saving of Italian Jews. The truth remains the truth, but some truths can be more painful and controversial than others, I suppose. Now, forgive the self-promotion here, but um, the point is, if you want to read more, at least what I have to say about this, my book, uh, Why Catholics Are Right, has just been reissued in paperback, and you can get it from stores or amazon.ca, and there's most of a chapter on Pope Pius, because it's a lie in history, it divides Jews and Catholics, and it shouldn't, it should bring people together. So please uh, have a look at that, but the main thing is, know the truth.